Now, uh, simultaneous interpreting, I have received a query about uh, what to do as a start in order to learn how to do uh, simultaneous interpreting. Of course, simultaneous interpreting is actually one of the easiest, I would say, uh, interpreting modes um, if, uh, for some people. But there are others who find uh, simultaneous interpreting very hard to do. Now, how do you overcome this difficulty? What are the exercises that you need to be doing in order to make you um, capable of doing a session without having uh, too much panic uh, you know, uh, before the, the session or during the session? The first thing to do, of course, is to do some exercises. What kind of exercises that are um, needed for simultaneous interpreting, like conference interpreting? Of course, I, I, as I said in my previous uh, videos about simultaneous interpreting, is that you need to be aware of what the topic is. You need to know who the speaker is, uh, what kind of background the speaker is about. So you cannot just sort of jump into simultaneous interpreting without knowing anything about the conference, for example, the background of the conference, who are the speakers, what are the topics they are discussing. And you have actually even looked at some of their works before you go into conference interpreting. Most of conference interpreting, they will require simultaneous interpreting, which means you have to do it instantaneously. You have to be relaxed, but ready. Now, what are the exercises? The first exercise I would say to you, and I'm going to explain it in this session, is called shadowing. And shadowing in, in, in simultaneous interpreting, or interpreting in general, means that you listen to a video where somebody is speaking in front of you. And while you're listening, you have to be a good listener. While you're listening, you need to be starting to repeat what they say immediately. And you are recording your voice. So you are listening to them very carefully and you're trying to catch up with them in terms of speed. And you have to be aware what kind of segmentation they are making. In other words, the breaks in their speech. Now, what does it mean, a break in their speech? It's like what I'm just saying now, as you can see, that my speech is not continuously carrying on without any pauses. There are some uh, pauses which are short pauses and long pauses that are spoken by the interpreter or by the speaker. And these short pauses and long pauses are actually important in order to know when you have a long pause, that means the speaker has finished the sentence or the concept they are trying to make. And the short pauses is like what I am, when I'm speaking here, I can speak a phrase and then I stop and then I another phrase and I stop. Sometimes uh, it works as clauses or phrases. What's the difference between clauses and phrases? Phrases, um, there are five types of phrases like noun phrase, verb phrase, adjective phrase, adverb phrase. <coughs> and these are um, uh, constituents, uh, they call them in linguistics, um, or short but meaningful uh, parts like in the school, for example, that's a prepositional phrase. <coughs> or going shopping, um, is also another phrase, but that's a noun, noun phrase. So these phrases, or even closes, closes such as, um, as I am trying to explain, that is, a, that is a clause. Or because of the situation that is happening in Iraq, for example, that's another clause. Or given the fact that the, um, uh, the European Union is trying to solve this problem or issue, that's another clause. These are um, segment, uh, segments that are, you need to be aware of and they help you in interpreting. <coughs> so, shadowing meaning that you uh, bring, you look for a video, 
where you have somebody who is in, in, uh, in front of the camera, uh, that is on screen. Uh, while they are speaking, you are copying what they are saying in the same language. So you do not need to interpret anything. That is the first exercise. In other words, when they say, may I suggest, you say, may I suggest that this situation that we are in, you say, and that, uh, that's this situation that we are in, is going to be very, very boring. Is going to be very, very boring. So you carry on with this, what's called shadowing, until you finish the video. Now, of course, you don't need to take very big videos uh, or long uh, uh, parts of a video. You can do shadowing for five minutes first or for one minute and a half first. So you don't have to take a very long video and do the uh, um, shadowing. Of course, the longer the video is, uh, the better it is. But however, the issue is, is not the length, it is actually how you are keeping up with the speaker instead of, in terms of speed and also in terms of clarity of your voice. Very, very important. When you're recording your voice while doing shadowing, you need to listen to the recording and see if you have slurred, if you have minced your words. And if you have done that, then you have to be doing it again. And in order not to mince your words, you use what's called uh, the pencil um, exercise, which means that when you are speaking, uh, there is what's called pencil exercise where you put your uh, uh, pen or pencil in your mouth and start reading a text, for example, and see how hard it is for your lips to actually uh, move. Uh, that is a good exercise for clarity, for articulation of the words that you are actually speaking when you are speaking. And that is very, very important to make sure that it is very clear what you are saying. Now, when you do the exercise with a pencil first, and then without a pencil, without a pencil, you will see the difference in terms of how you struggle more in order to uh, make your uh, uh, voice clear and you are, you are articulating all the words and enunciating them clearly. That is shadowing. So you listen to the video from the beginning to the end. Could be five minutes video, three minute video. It doesn't matter. But you listen to it only once first to know what the topic is about. Then the second time you do shadowing straight away. Make sure that you are a good listener. In other words, if there are words that the speaker is saying and you don't know what they are, you have to make sure that you listen very carefully to listen to every single letter they are saying, every single word, every th single um, uh, segment they are saying very clearly in your ears. And of course, you use headphones. Never listen to a, a speaker or um, be in a, a group of people and you are listening. That is not going to be um, a good way of listening. You have to be a good listener and also you have to be articulate and clear in your projection of the words. Projection means yeah, that you say the words and it's clear. You can hear what, the, what, what you're saying when you're recording. And good luck with the first exercise.